These are super exciting times. Every investor should get really excited about stock market crashes and down stocks. Absolutely don't listen to your emotions or to other people. The best times are when stocks are down. Let's look at a history going back to 1980 of the S&P 500. Ready? Ready for this one? This was a big stock market crash, 20 some percent in the day. This is a big stock market crash. This was a stock market crash. This was a stock market crash. And we're in the process of one here. So in the last 40 some years we've had, we're in the process or have seen four different stock market crashes. And look what happened every time. Crash, new high. Crash, new, but probably be equal. Crash, new high. Crash, new high. So, What's the goal here? Why should you be excited? Guys, in the moment, the emotions are tough. Trust me, we're going through it now. And even though only seven or 8% of my money is invested in stocks, it still sucks for me to see my stocks go down. I'm just very grateful that the only person people I manage money for are my brother, my father, and I, and that's it. They believe in the process. But I can understand when you're at home and you're looking at your stock market and your 401k and your accounts going down every single week or they go down five or 6% in a week, it can suck. But I want you to remember this chart forever. If you believe in the US economy, you should believe in dollar cost averaging. You should believe every single month, every single quarter, every single year, you pick the time, I don't care what it is, and you buy long-term ETFs and you decide to dabble into stocks, learn a process like ours about buying individual stocks. You buy 10, 20, 30, whatever the number is, and you buy them based on good fundamentals. And as the stock falls, as long as the fundamentals and the assumptions are the same, you keep buying more and you dollar cost average down on those. Is it easy? No, absolutely not. It's simple, but not easy. But you will find in history that if you dollar cost average as stocks fall, you do very well. In fact, I did a video recently in which I said, listen, dollar cost average, but when stocks are below their long-term averages, if you increase that, you get about 50% more money at the end of retirement by doing that. Just by saying, oh, stocks are below the long-term average, I should invest more. Spoiler alert, we're not below our long-term average yet. There are three metrics I always look at, and I will repeat this till I'm blue in the face. 10 years, six adjusted PE ratio historically is 15 or 16. It's currently at 27. The stock market GDP ratio, which you want to be around 80%, it's currently at 145, 150. I don't remember the exact number. And the price to sales ratio historically is around one and it's currently at 2.2, 2.3. They're all saying we need to fall a lot further. So you might be watching saying, well, I should stop investing. No, because you need to get yourself in the habit of never trying to guess where the markets are going to go. There's a difference between making a decision based on the future versus sitting here and saying, uh, I think I'm based on the long-term future versus I think there's going to be a crash now. Whenever I hear that from pundits, I always chuckle. I always laugh. It's an absolute gibberish thing to say. Any predictions, where interest rates going to go in the next year? We're no idea. What I look at is where do we stand today relative to, relative to history about where the future looks? That's merely it. Now, I have the extra benefit, and I will say this Tom blue in the face. I have multiple streams of cash flow, so I don't need to be invested in the market at all times. That's a lot different than most of our viewers. Most of our viewers are watching and realizing they have to sit for retirement, and you never know where stocks are going to go. So you dollar cost average month in, month out. The great thing about crashes and the great thing about bear markets is it allows you to buy the same quality companies at much lower prices. If you love a company at 100 and the fundamentals stay the same, you should absolutely be in love at 50. But instead of thinking about it, dollar cost average into a wide, broad base of, of, of investments. Don't go out there and invest in the, in the actively managed mutual fund. They're going to fee you to death and they're not going to do well. Over 90% of actively managed mutual funds do not beat the S&P over a 10-year basis. Do you know what matches the S&P over a 10-year basis? VOO, SPY, and other index-related low-cost ETFs. You should absolutely use this time to your benefit. And stocks, I believe, will go lower. When? I don't know. But they will go lower. And when they go lower, it will feel scarier. But just remember, how did you feel back here during COVID? How did you feel if you were around in 08 and 09? How did you feel if you were around in the 2000s? It was scary. This was my first real crash and I was scared. And now I look back and go, best thing that ever happened to me. Best thing. Because I learned from that to say, okay, stocks rebounded. People who were smart, look at Amazon. Amazon was at 113, got down to six. People sit there and use this example to me all the time saying, look, Amazon, yeah, but who was sticking around on Amazon? For it to get to six, everybody was leaving Amazon. That's the point here. Now, that's an obscure example, and I get that, and I'm not sitting there saying you're going to find the next Amazon. But the point I'm trying to make here is the companies that are strong and good will stand, and the stocks will go down. Warren Buffett's portfolio is 
down and it's down a lot, I am sure. And he'll report that in the next earnings and that's the case. Value stocks still go down during bad times. The point is you sit back, you try to take as much emotion as you can out of it. It is impossible to remove all emotion. I have emotion. I get scared. It might be a lot less than other people, but I have emotion and I get scared when stocks go down. I don't really get scared. I just get going, okay. It, to me, it's an indicator. Paul, is your thesis correct? Is your thesis still correct? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And there will be a lot scarier times going forward. If stocks fall another 40, 50% from here, how are you going to feel then? There's an easy way to handle it. Take advantage of these good times. When I say these good times, stocks falling. Take advantage by dollar cost averaging month in, month out, like clockwork. Again, you might sit there and say, but Paul, you don't do that. Well, I do do that when it comes to my individual stocks. I don't buy ETFs though, because I have a process that I feel comfortable with. And I have so many other investments that generate me cash flow. I don't need to be 100% invested at all times. I'm okay not doing that. If you don't, if, you, if you're in the same position, more power to you. If you're not like most people, dollar cost average and a low cost ETFs. Have I said that enough yet? But I absolutely want you to take away from this video. Scary, 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 scary. And guess what? Led to bigger highs. Look at this, this crash right here, which you barely even see. This is a prime example. This is a 20% drop in the market in one day. 20% drop in the market in one day. Imagine if you got scared and sold everything, what you might've missed out on. By the time you bought back in, you probably missed out on 30 or 40% gains. The friend of mine back in 08 and 09, when she told me she thought stocks were gonna go to zero, she sold out right about here. And I guarantee she didn't get back in until about here. Now you might sit there and say, well, she didn't miss out. Yeah, but this chart right here is a little misleading. I think she probably missed out on 30 or 40% gains. So that's the key, guys. That is the key. You've got to be sitting there and saying, take yourself out of the situation and say, what is the market telling me right now versus what is reality? That is the big key. The media is crazy. They're going to go and put the scary stories that match the recent events. I see it all the time. Tim sees it all the time. All these people saying stocks are going to zero, terrible investment. Guys, we haven't seen terrible yet. Do not believe the FUD. All I said, you will see me just like it was in 08 and 09, just like it was. I, I'm sitting there saying, I absolutely love stocks and they're lower. There will be a time on this channel, I guarantee, when I will be criticized for saying that stocks are below value and they're still flat or down. People say, you're an idiot. No, that, that's fine. Because the key to being a value investor is to always be wrong, always look wrong. When stocks are up a ton because of hype, you're like, that's overpriced. You look wrong. When stocks are down a ton because of negativity and pessimism, Paul, you're wrong. You don't get it. The economy is going to crap. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to keep buying great investments at lower prices. That is the process. Do not believe the media stories. It's going to be amazing to me that Tesla was at an all-time high of $400 a share. When Tesla at some point is below $100 a share, people are going to be talking about what a terrible company is. I'm like, wait a second. So at $400 a share, here's how amazing and incredible it was. At $100 a share or lower, it's a terrible company. How does that even make sense? They're going to have more sales. They're going to have more profit. They're going to have all these other better things. And they're going to, that's the whole point I want you to remember. Mark it in this video that I said this. It will absolutely happen. There will be a time when Apple is probably selling a lot cheaper than we want it to sell. And guess what? That'll be an indication to me that we're getting close. We need people to give up on Apple, Tesla, those two, and crypto. Crypto is the next big thing. People still believe in crypto. Sorry, guys. I just don't believe in it. I believe it's a purely 100% speculative asset, and you've seen it happen in all the other cryptos out there. Bitcoin's the last one still at 19,000, but the other ones, look at the one. There's one that's down like nine, Doge, not Dogecoin, Ethereum. I mean, all these things are down so much money. Why? There's nothing to them. If you believe that's your, that's your key to the, your financial future, guys, I'm sorry. It just won't work long run. And you're not going to catch, you're not going to be lucky enough to catch the one stock that makes you absolutely wealthy. And you shouldn't want that because it's going to give you a sense of, ex of excitement and confidence that you should not have. That's probably going to hurt you in the long run. So learn a process, learn the right mentality, learn the right emotion of everything. This probably makes sense to you as much as you might want to fight it. Subscribe to the channel, watch more videos. Even if you hate what I'm saying, I want you to subscribe just to see in the future how things turn out. And two, you need to watch our next video about the understanding of your emotions, mentality, and process to successfully invest. You must watch it. You'll walk away understanding money and investing much better.